since you started looking at the Buckeyes and started looking at, uh, you already know, Georgia personnel inside and out, uh, is, is there anything that about this game that intrigues you more today than it did when it was first announced that is more of an interesting uh, kind of matchup that you're looking at or that you think about this game maybe a little bit differently today than you did three weeks ago? You know, when I, not really much has changed, but when I think of Ohio State, the offense, the quarterback, the receivers, I might automatically go back to Tennessee. Okay, Tennessee, and just from the outside looking in, is a very you know similar team, uh, excellent quarterback. I mean, Hendon Hooker was one of the best in the country. You look at the receivers that Tennessee had this year. Uh, great, great players. Ohio State obviously had the same great depth at the position. And both teams uh, run the ball, you know, you know, very well. Uh, so when I look at Ohio State, I kind of, I kind of see similarities from, from that standpoint. And of course, Georgia had great success against Tennessee when they played in Athens. Uh, the, 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 that was, I mean, I've been covering Georgia for over 25 years and that was the loudest stadium I've ever, I mean, in Athens, anyway, in my life, I've been to Baton Rouge many times, and that's probably the loudest. Knoxville, Neyland can can be really, really crazy, especially at, at night there too. But uh, uh, you know, Georgia's uh, that noise that night against Tennessee, that day against Tennessee, really made a big difference. I think the Vols had like eight, you know, you know, offensive fault start type penalties. Now, granted, the game's in the bins. There's going to be more Ohio State fans there for this, uh, but so I'm not sure how much the noise factor will, will affect the Buckeyes in this one. But for just from a talent standpoint. The way they go about their business, I do compare them a lot to Tennessee. And we'll see what happens. I mean, Georgia obviously had their issues against LSU in the passing game. You know, in the SEC championship, you know, the Tigers threw for over 500 yards in that one. Although, you know, some of that I think was due mostly to some of the communication issues we saw on the back end. But, again, the house they can – I mean, it's a team that Georgia is definitely taking uh, quite, quite seriously. You know, they've got the correct some issues they had from the SEC title game to have success. Yeah, that's my number one recollection of watching Georgia, Tennessee was especially once Georgia got the lead, the crowd was into it mm -hmm. and the Georgia front seven was dominating that more and more. It just became this tidal wave of momentum, talent, speed that just overwhelmed Tennessee's offensive line, especially the two tackles. And it just seemed like you know, here they come, you know, it's, it's yeah. it, hooker. You better get the ball out of your hand in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And that's something that CJ Stroud is going to have to deal with. Now, Hendon and CJ are different type quarterbacks. I mean, Hendon, uh, Hendon will look to run. They, they, they'll, he'll try to get on the edge. He can do things with his legs. Well, I think CJ has that capability. That's something we have not seen much from him. He prefers to stay in the pocket and, uh, you know, buy time, make plays. And our offensive line has done a great job. I think they've only given up, what, eight sacks all season long. So that's going to be a, be a challenge for Georgia. Uh, you know, having Jalen Carter there in the middle, I think is a, a big problem. I think for Ohio State as, as, as he's been for, for most teams this year. And we, as the, the famous picture, I guess, from SEC, SEC championship of him uh, sacking Jaden Daniels and holding him up in the air with one arm with a number one, you know, the finger, <laughs> finger going up. He's a, he's, he's a load to deal with. That's something that uh, Ohio State is going to have to really kind of, work to kind of try to contain because if not uh then that defense front will be able to get pressure on cj stroud and that's when you can maybe force him into some mistakes yeah i joked with our buckeye guys uh on our ohio state show the other day that maybe Jalen carter's going to switch hands uh with cj <laughs> stroud maybe to, that's the only trick he's got left that uh, just switch hands uh, we got Anthony Dasher here to talk Georgia football. Of course, the Buckeyes and the Bulldogs get together for just the second time in history, and this one a little bit more important than that uh, 1993 Citrus Bowl that I remember well. I do too. But uh, absolutely, it was a good ball game. Oh. Buckeyes fumbled in the red zone mm -hmm. with maybe five or ten minutes left, and that pretty much sealed it. And Eric Zire, Andre Hastings, I believe, yes, and Andre Hastings the first on that team. Garrison, Garrison Hurst as well. So uh, that was, yeah. uh, was some talent on both sides of the ball. That day, it's hard to believe it's been 30 years since they since they yeah. played. Like you said, I can still remember that game, you know, pretty pretty well from my old age. Absolutely, I'm right there with you. The one thing I should have hit you with, uh, Dash, is the uh, when you mentioned the the wide receiver position being a point of emphasis for the recruiting class. Well, Kirby got the jump on 2023 with a couple recruits of sorts through the transfer portal right in the conference yeah. and right in the division with two of the best in the conference coming yeah. to Georgia 
from Mississippi State and Ra-Ra Thomas. Then you've got Dominic Lovett, who is a top five receiver in catches and yards in the SEC out of Mizzou. Yeah, I mean, we had, you know, the, both of those guys visited Athens, I think, a week and a half, two weeks ago. And, you know, we've been hearing for a while that, you know, George was in a very good position. And then yesterday morning, I kind of got a heads up to kind of keep my eye out because there was going to be some, enough, some more receiver momentum as it was put to me, <laughs> you know, and, and that's what happened. I mean, Ray Ray Thomas, uh, again, uh, put up some great numbers from Mississippi State, you know, this year. He's a bigger receiver, uh, can go up and get balls, had a decent game against the Georgia. But Dominic Lovett is one. He, he's got a – He's, he's pretty special right now. I, mean, I think he finished third in the conference as far as big plays you know, go last year. He's a very, very fast guy. He's uh, has just had, had a ton of explosive this past uh, season. I know when Georgia played Missouri, he had a very big game, scored a touchdown. So Georgia saw firsthand you know, what he's all about. So getting those two guys in, and uh, and like I, I, along with the fact that Georgia won't lose a ton off the, you know, barring any, any attrition, is, not, is going to bring back Lad McConkey, A.D. Mitchell, Marcus Roseby, Jack Saint, um, Dylan Bell. I mean, it's going to be a, one of Kirby Smart's deeper, at least on paper right now, one of the, his the deeper receiving classes that uh, he's had. And, you know, and that's going to be important for them because, again, they're going to more than likely lose Darnell Washington to the NFL draft, one of the tight ends. They will have Brock Bowers back. Uh, but they wanted, I think, to make sure they have as many weapons as possible in that outside. And so far, I think they've done a great job of bringing some of those guys in. Yeah, like you say, Love had caught six against uh, the Bulldogs in a near upset that went down to the wire the last three or four minutes. And then uh, Thomas, uh, seven touchdown receptions on 44 yeah. catches. That's nice yeah. production there for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, both those guys, again, that you can't say enough about having that SEC experience too. And that's uh, something that, of course, George will have a new quarterback next year that they have to get used to you know, catching passes from and, and all of that. But uh, they really like the weapons they've got right now for next year. Anthony Dasher, there you see where to go right there. You can follow him on Twitter, and then it's UGASports.com, the rivals platform for Georgia Athletics, and uh, track him throughout uh, the playoffs in the national championship game. Anthony, we appreciate you making the time for us. My pleasure. I'm glad we could get it done.